Let's start with that breaking news story. Chris Harney's killer, Janusz Wallis, has been stabbed by another inmate in prison. Wallis has been behind bars since the assassination of Chris Harney in 1993. He was due to go on parole in the next few days after a decision last week by the Constitutional Court. Senior reporter Abwe Wemtila is outside the Jose Mampuru prison in Pretoria and he joins us now. So, Aviwe, this is quite a dramatic development. Uh, we don't have a great deal of details, but what is the latest information that you have? Good evening, Sally, and you're right. The details are a bit thin at this stage, but it has been confirmed by the Correctional Services Department that the man that killed Chris Ani some 29 years ago, Yanus Walus, has been stabbed by another inmate. We do know that although they were living in single cells, it was in the same housing unit where they get to interact with each other. Incident happening at around 4.30 this afternoon where that stabbing incident has happened. He's currently now inside the prison that's behind us, the Jose Mampuru prison, uh, here in Pretoria, where we do understand he's receiving um, health care there. Uh, we're not sure the extent of the wounds. As, as I mentioned, the details are still a bit thin. I even tried to get some word from the Correctional Services spokesperson, Singabako uh, Numalo, just on the state of him. And he mentioned that uh, while he's receiving uh, uh, in, in, well, care at this stage, uh, they can't confirm the extent of it. We do know that there could be even internal bleeding. So some of the things that they're watching out for at the state. But we do know that the perpetrator um, is known to correctional services, hasn't been questioned as yet and will be questioned. And we do know then there'll be a given uh, detailed incident report. But for the moment, I want you to take a listen to Siang Abakong Mumalo, the correctional services spokesperson. Department, uh, we've issued a statement confirming this unfortunate uh, stabbing incident involving inmate Janos Walus. Uh, it is alleged that he was stabbed by another inmate. Uh, from the same housing unit, although they are in single cells, but in that unit, um, the inmates outside are able to mingle. So as a department, it's something that um, uh, has disturbed us, but what was critical was that um, we offer immediate health care to the uh, inmate, and we have uh, stated that he is stable. But we don't want to leave anything to chance. Hence, our healthcare officials are still with him and they'll run all necessary tests, including x rays, just to ensure that even internally there is nothing disturbing. At the first time that we can then say, no, we can um, go to bed knowing that there is no imminent danger. So you can confirm he's in the prison hospital, is that correct? He is in, 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 in our hospital uh, and uh, within the facility, and our healthcare officials are monitoring him. And if the test there is a need, even if later the TP transferred outside, they will make that particular call. We do not interfere with their work because it's a specialized thought. Mm. Why, what is critical for us is to ensure that an inmate is afforded the best care possible. All right, so as far as we know, he's in a stable condition in that prison hospital. You're standing outside the prison. But, of course, it was just last week that the Constitutional Court um, looked at his many applications for parole, many denials over the years, and came to the conclusion that there was nothing standing in the way of granting him parole, that in, according to the law they had to allow his release. And they ordered that release uh, to be done within 10 days, which must be within the next few days. I would imagine that this incident now um, is causing a great deal of concern uh, about his safety because parolees still fall within the ambit of correctional services. So one wonders, and of course we don't have details at this stage, um, how they're going to guarantee his safety. Because clearly, uh, many people uh, are very, very angry about this, and some might be uh, inclined to take the law into their own hands, as his attacker was this afternoon. Talking about that anger, Sally, we do know that the South African Communist Party, as well as uh, Kosatu and the ANC, were actually planning a picket uh, headed here to Kosi Mampuru Prison 
just tomorrow morning at around 9 a.m. They will be here already as they'll assemble uh, in town. In so that would give you the extent of some of the anger and the action that we were expecting in the coming days. Following that judgment by the highest court in the land, that was eight days ago, the Constitutional Court uh, on the 21st of November, a unanimous decision saying that uh, Yanus Walus, the man that killed Chris Hani on the 10th of April back in 1993, must be released on parole. Remember that order there, uh, Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, mentioning that that must be done in 10 days. That 10 days, Sally, lapse, in fact, on Thursday. So it was either going to be tomorrow or on Thursday where that he'd, he'd have to be released according to the highest court in the land. So now we do know that he's been even given exemption by the Department of Home Affairs um, where he is to stay in South Africa uh, and serve out his parole in the country. But we do know then those parole conditions are still to be determined by the Minister of Correctional Services, Ronald Lamola. So we don't know what the conditions will be on parole. But we do know, according to Singabako Ngumalo, the Correctional Services spokesperson, that it's their responsibility as a department to ensure that all inmates are protected uh, even when they are released on parole. So we're expecting some security measures to be in place for Yanus Walus, uh, the man that killed the uh, commander of the Mkondo Wesizwe, as well as the general secretary of the South African Communist Party, Chris Hani. Of course, we do know Chris Hani uh, had a huge following, so his death was very significant. I remember even attending uh, the Concord proceedings where uh, they were laying out uh, their merits on uh, their arguments on what should happen. And we heard the uh, advocate Moses Kakana suggesting that that death of Chris Ani was, in fact, um, an attempt at uh, killing democracy in itself, given the uh, ramifications that it would have and the outrage that it would have caused if the political heads uh, in that time did not manage to calm the situation down. Yeah, and of course it was at that time that we saw Nelson Mandela uh, take real leadership, uh, speaking to the country, addressing the country and calling for calm. And it was the assassination of Chris Hani that pushed forward uh, the election date uh, because it became very clear uh, that it was a very unstable situation. We know as well that Clive Darby Lewis served, I think, 22 years. Uh, he was in cahoots uh, with Janusz Wallace, helping him to plan the assassination. He was released just before his death uh, from cancer a few years ago. But certainly there will be many questions tonight around guaranteeing the safety of Janusz Wallace. If indeed he was due to be released tomorrow, one wonders if that is going to go ahead at all, bearing in mind that he's now in the prison hospital with a stab wound or wounds. We're told in a stable condition, but many questions around his guaranteed safety. Uh, when he is released, you making the point it has to happen tomorrow or Thursday. I'll leave you to get more information. Uh, we'll chat to you later. Thank you so much for that update. That, of course, is Aviwe Mtila, who is in Swane, outside Hossi Mampuru prison, where Janusz Wallace was stabbed at about half past four this afternoon.